So the shell is a program on your computer that allows you to interact with the operating system through the use of commands. It's called the shell because it acts as a layer on top of the operating system. It can generally be used in two different ways. The first way is interactively. When you open a terminal window, you get access to the shell in an interactive mode. You'll see a prompt where you can type out a command, then you can press enter and the shell will interpret and execute your command to accomplish a specific task. In this case, I just listed the contents of the directory I am currently in. The second non-interactive way is with a file. You can add one or many different commands to a file and then you can use the shell to read through the lines within the file and execute all the commands within it. This is typically called shell scripting. There are many different shells you can use, all with different features and varying syntax. In a shell script near the top of the file, you'll normally see a shebang line that will tell the operating system which shell program should execute the contents within the file. Three of the most popular shells are bash, zsh, and fish. In this video, I'll be sharing with you the differences between them and when you might want to use each. As we move forward, it's important you remember the difference between interactive and non-interactive shell use as we just outlined. One of the most common and widely used shells around is bash. Bash is typically the default login shell in most Linux distributions. This means that if you run echo dollar sign shell on your system and you haven't changed the default shell you're using, oftentimes you'll get bash as the result. An exception to this would be Mac OS, where the default shell used to be bash but is now ZSH. Bash uses a very specific syntax. As an example, to set an environment variable, you would do something like this. You first type export, then the variable name, followed immediately by an equal sign, then double quote the value of the variable and closing double quote. In another shell like fish, it would look completely different. Because bash is so widespread, you'll probably want to stick to using this when writing your own shell scripts, especially if you want to make them public and share them with other people. Because bash is commonly installed by default on many other systems, your script will most likely work on other machines. Bash is also great for learning shell scripting as it's universal and there are a lot of resources out there for it. Note that Bash is not POSIX compliant by default. POSIX compliance basically means that the syntax that you write your commands or shell script in must follow a set of rules to ensure it can run on basically any Unix-like operating system. Bash includes extra features that are not in the standard like arrays for example. That being said, it can run in a POSIX compliant mode and you can use it to run POSIX compliant scripts if you need to do that. Now on the downside, I find that Bash isn't that great when using it interactively, when you're just typing out commands in a terminal window. Even though there might be ways of doing it, it's harder to configure and customize when compared to other shells. You might have a harder time making your prompt look nice and it'll be harder to add really useful features like syntax highlighting, nice tab completions, and auto suggestions. That's where other shells like ZSH and Fish come in. ZSH, though not entirely the same, has a pretty similar syntax to Bash, especially when using it interactively. The main advantages of using ZSH include some of the built-in features and the plugin ecosystem. ZSH has really nice tab completion. If you set this up properly in the .zshrc configuration file, after pressing tab to get completions for a command command, you can press tab again and then navigate the results with your arrow keys. It also has a feature you can enable that will correct your spelling mistakes. And most significantly, there's a pretty large ecosystem of plugins you can use to take your setup to another level. I really love using the ZSH auto suggestions and ZSH syntax highlighting plugins. The first one will give you suggestions to complete your command as you type it based on your history. And the second one provides syntax highlighting where the command you're typing will show in green if it's correct and red if it's not. You can also make your prompt look really nice with several different plugins available. In my case, I'm currently using Power Level 10K. As you can see, with ZSH, you can make the experience of using the terminal interactively much better. In spite of this, I would still recommend you write your shell scripts in Bash instead of ZSH as the syntax is not fully compatible. Remember that you just need to specify which shell should execute your script and the top of the file with the shebang line. You can then just
just execute your script normally. The primary downside of CSH when it comes to interactive use is that you have to do a lot of manual setup and configuration yourself. You basically add all your configuration to a .zshrc configuration file that is located in your home directory. Mine has quite a few different things in it to set up all the different plugins and make it work nicely. If instead you want a shell that has a lot of these really nice features built in, is more user friendly and requires minimal configuration, then you'll want to check out Fish instead, short for Friendly Interactive Shell. Fish has some really nice features already built in when you install it. This includes auto suggestions and syntax highlighting, which we had to install and set up manually for ZSH. And the auto suggestions in Fish, I think are a little bit smarter. You'll get suggestions for command options or file paths, as well as suggestions based on your history. The tab completion is also really nice in Fish. It'll open up a menu like we saw with ZSH and you can navigate it with your arrow keys. Fish even has a special command called fish underscore config and it'll open up a user-friendly page in a web browser where you can configure a bunch of different things including colors, your prompt, functions, and more. Beyond this, you can also install plugins with fish to enhance the functionality even further. Now the biggest consideration with fish is the syntax. It's meant to be much more user-friendly than bash or zsh but it's pretty different. You'll need to learn the fish syntax for your configuration files or when executing commands interactively. For example, this is how you set an environment variable with fish. You first type set then dash gx followed by the variable name and then the value. Whereas if you remember from earlier with bash it would be like this. So when using fish interactively or when configuring it you'll need to learn the new syntax but when it comes to writing shell scripts it depends on whether or not you want to share them with other people. If you're not planning on these scripts being public and available for other people, then you can definitely use Fish for scripting as the language is easier to understand and it makes scripts easier to write. Again, even if you're using Fish, you can still write your shell scripts with Bash. You just need to provide the proper shebang line so that the operating system knows which shell it should use. If you have a Bash script that you want to execute within Fish and it doesn't have a shebang line, you can also just specify which shell to use followed by the name of the file. As you can see, there is really no right or wrong answer here. You can choose to use only one shell or even use several. Switching between one shell to another is as simple as just writing the name of the shell, pressing enter, and starting it up. To change the default shell on your system, if it's already installed, you can execute chsh for change shell, followed by dash s, then dollar sign, opening parenthesis, which, and then the shell name, and then closing parenthesis. Again, you can use whichever shell name here you want to use. To summarize, me personally, I would recommend you use Bash to write your shell scripts that you want to be public and share with other people, as most people will have Bash installed on their system. For interactive use in a terminal window, I would recommend you use ZSH or Fish because of the advanced features available. I've been using ZSH since I bought a MacBook a couple of years ago and it was the default shell. I really like my current setup and don't really feel like I need to change it, but you have to go through more manual work to get everything thing working really nice. If you want it to just work, have awesome features by default, be user friendly and require minimal configuration, then I would recommend Fish instead. Again, this recommendation is specifically for interactive use, not really for shell scripting. If you want a simpler syntax for your own shell scripts that you won't really be sharing with many people, then you can use Fish for that too. Of course, if the person you're planning on sharing with already has Fish installed, then that wouldn't be a problem either. All right, you guys, that's it for this video. I hope Hope you enjoyed it and found it interesting and helpful. If you did, don't forget to leave a like down below. Let me know in the comment section if you have any questions or feedback for me. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to see more content like this from me. See you guys in the next one. Peace.